Hello students, welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Dr. K. R. Rao Mohan, Associate Professor, the Head Department of Anthropology, Sikkim University. Today we are going to talk a module on the contributions of Milton Singer, Mickey Marriott and Louis Dumont. This module comes from the paper Theories and Methods in Social and Cultural Anthropology. So before we go this module, let us see what are the learning objectives from this module. To study and know the significant contributions of eminent anthropologists, the contributions of Milton Singer, the contributions of Mickey Marriott, the contributions of Louis Dumo. Along with their contributions, we will also know some of their life history and the concepts and theories propounded by these eminent anthropologists. Milton Singer is very famous for his monumental work on when a great tradition modernizes. What does it mean when a great tradition modernizes? In that sense, Singer was trying to say that India is a great tradition and how this great traditional system has changed, in what ways it has changed and what are the socio-cultural features that ascribed for these changes. In a sense, Milton is talking of modernization. So in that sense, Singer has devoted much of his ethnographic works in South India. So, and he wants to study how culture as an instrumental role played when these traditional things are becoming slowly becoming modernized. So Singer studied the cultural role of madrasity in South Indians and tried to show as to how these great traditions have transformed or modified in the light of a little tradition. So, when he was taking a trip to Madras, now it is Chennai, he studied industrialists to learn how their careers had been affected by their culture. So, he wants to see the link between entrepreneurship and uh, the given culture. But the result suggested that industrial leaders and their families were able to successfully mobilize from village to small town from agricultural economy to large industrial commerce to modern education to modern industries without losing their traditional institutions safeguarding their value systems protecting their culture so that gave lot of impetus to see with these industrial families, how this has been happening in the context of or the juxtaposition of tradition and the modernity. Singer stated that these social institutions have often proved adaptive in modern industry. So in his one of his famous book, Traditional India, Structure and Change, Singer introduced the concept of cultural geography, cultural performance, cultural specialists, and cultural media. And together he propounded that these things come and as cultural complex, which includes cultural performance, cultural specialists, and cultural media. And thus creating a bridge between the great and little tradition of Indian civilization. And to, re to once again understand that great traditions are basically with a text and little traditions without text, the folk societies, the rural communities. Great tradition is also called the civilization center. So now, Singer was amused to see how this tradition means handing down all the belief systems, the customs, 
and information just through orally from one generation to another generation. To once again know what is this great tradition? Great tradition is associated with elites. The few elites the who are educated, controlling, and the existing literature and the intellectual thinkers who have the capacity to analyze, to interpret, and disseminate this cultural knowledge to the masses in the one continuum. And the another continuum, little tradition comprises belief pattern institutions, the entire knowledge including folk tales, legends, myths and which is centered around the peasant communities and all the performances are centered around the structure of that particular society. Now Singer thought that these great tradition and little tradition are both are interdependent. As great traditions in India try to cultural elements without any change, they try to disseminate this knowledge to the little traditions. So perhaps we can understand in the typology of top-down approach. Here you, Singer uses the word hierarchic to signify the dichotomy between Great tradition and little tradition, like in a caste hierarchy, upper caste versus lower caste, even the traditions are in a hierarchical manner. Let us now understand the contributions of Mickey Marriott. Mickey Marriott is very famous for his two concepts called universalization and parochialization. So, taking further Milton Singer's concept, Mickey Marriott want to study how these traditions are being produced and reproduced. So Mickey Marriott ethnographic work is on the little communities in an indigenous civilization and he thus come out with these two concepts called universalization and parochialization. Mickey Marriott closely observed the socio-religious organization in Kishangari village in Uttar Pradesh. So where he did his extensive field work. So he established that these concepts on the basis of great tradition and little tradition, which have been earlier propounded by Robert Redfield. So these two processes are complementary to each other. Sometimes little tradition elements are taken into great tradition and great tradition elements are incorporated into little tradition. So with this, Mackie Marriott was interested to state that universalization refers to downward devolution of elements of great tradition and their integration with the elements of little tradition. For example, any Vedic element, Vedic is basically a Sanskrit kind of a thing, perhaps which have been come into a local folk way of singing or chanting or anything. So unlike universalization, the other end parochialization is a process which some literate or Sanskritic elements of great tradition are learnt about or modified by the village or folk people to become a part of this tradition. So this process of parochialization constitutes the characteristic cre creative work of little communities. And Mickey Marriott says that this Indian civilization is called indigenous civilization as it is on its own. It has not been borrowed by anything. And Marriott opened that and it is visible that this little tradition and great tradition is very much visible. It is observable at an empirical level through festivals by doing rites to the deities, village deities, both gods and goddesses, penance observed, 
and this is all reflected in the religious practices of Kishingari village. And Mickey Marriott was uh, the opinion that perhaps this tradition of blending of tradition might have developed as a result of continuous process of communication between the little, the local tradition and the bigger, greater tradition. Marriott was also interested how the social ranking was done in the societies, how people are positioned in a given social order. According to Marriott, rural stratification is closely, while in urban areas, the stratification system is relatively open due to various reasons. Because in an open society like urban society, it is basically interactional. To understand more, if a certain individual or group of family is able to acquire high status through achieved means, for example, one gets high education, improving their education status, wealth or better occupational position in the cities, but this is closed in the villages. You are supposed to be like that only because of your social identities and categories. So the individual or group may able to pass as a member of high social rank in terms of class because of your economic status. On the other hand, in the villages, the social rank depends upon on the traditional evaluation of your caste status. An individual belongs to upper caste, an individual belongs to a backward caste, an individual belongs to a lower social group and your interactions are limited. It is just between inter-individual interactions. So in metropolitan areas, the principle of corporate ranking, status is attributed to entire group, has no place. It is only individual ranking, it is not group ranking, that we all belong to one caste, this is not seen in the cities. And he wants to compare the village social stratification with an urban social ranking. So this gives clues to how a system is embedded in socio-economic statuses and here in the village system you are entirely bounded because of your caste identities. So Marriott is proposing the process of social mobility and how and why these individuals move up in the social ladder. What is the process of this social mobility? basing on these ranking systems that in rural societies you have this mobilities limited, dwarfed, but in urban societies your mobility is open, it is upon your individual achievement and you have the wider zones of reference in the units. And he has expanded these geographical spaces as social zones, the village, the linguistic, the region and the whole civilization, where individual is restricted to these zones. Let us now study about, know about a famous anthropologist from France, Louis Dumo. The immediate image comes to when we heard of Louis Dumo, his, his famous work on Homo Hierarchicus. 
this book is very influential book which specifically talks about how homo sapiens are hierarchically placed all human beings are same biologically but why these social distinctions and dumo was interested to study the caste system in india and how caste system has created these gaps and how people are given status according to their social identities and what operated this caste system in indian so duma has utilized both the indological and the structuralist approach in studying the caste system and the village social structure duma suggested that the traditional societies are characterized by the conception of collective nature and the nature of man and prevalence are basically social rather than individual goals so there was no self interest it was only the spirit of collectiveness that we all belong to one group and contrary to that why there is hierarchy based on the principle of purity and pollution in indian social structure and duma was interested to see why this village structures are different from modern societies so duma was interested to know how this concept of purity and pollution has operated and why certain groups are considered to be pure and why certain considered social groups are considered as polluted dumo stated that the jajmani system is a ritual expression rather than an economic arrangement so if you look at most of the villages in india are operated by jajmani system where each caste group is identified with one tradition with one occupation and there is an obligation that the peasant exchange his goods with the barber and the barber works for the other master so the yajman kame in relationship is there in this jajmani system there is an obligation there is no monetary things it is only obligation that the yajman takes care the needs of the barber or the dobi or the other service caste and perhaps this internal logic was been for a long time that these people are under a master who was doing their traditional occupations but dumo thought that it is not just because this is economic transactions but there is a kind of a ritual expression is there in this scheme of things so for dumo the system is governed by a specific set of ideas which impose limits upon economic power there is no economic power here here the underlying principle is the principle of hierarchy which delineates who is dominant and dominated that those who are in the upper positions social ladder and those service caste who are in the lower status of the social order it justifies the positions of these groups because certain occupations are considered to be pure and certain occupations are considered to be polluted hence 
Jajmani system is the religious expression of interdependence. While interdependence itself is derived from religion, and it is not only restricted to this, these hierarchical social positioning of people in the social ladder has also reflected in commensal transactions. Where should I eat? Whether anyone can come and eat in my house? Where can I go and eat in their house? So, commensal transactions are dependent upon what kind of interdependence you have or in what position you are situated in the social ladder. Now, purity of the consumer, the consuming place and the occasion is very significant in this scheme of things. So, according to Dumo, commensal rules and regulations emphasize hierarchy rather than separation. So, he was under the view that people are separated obviously at objective level, but this is due to the hierarchical positions that the few are on the top, some are on the middle, some are on the below ladder, some are on the lowest rung of the social fabric. So, Dumo in his Homo hierarchicus has built up a model for Indian civilization and he stresses that there is non-competitive spirit because people are not competing with each other. People are comfortably placed whether they know it or not because there is no insecurity among them because you are based on the ritual hierarchical system. Everyone is doing their own occupation. And in this kind of a scheme of things, where is the competition? However, Dumo's model, which is completely based on this ritual purity and pollution, but this scheme was not accepted by most of the scholars. So, in summary, the three prominent foreign scholars who have studied Indian civilization, namely Milton Singer, Mickey Marriott and Louis Dumo. Milton Singer trying to understand how the role of culture preserves maintains the strong bonds of family. So, he studied the entrepreneurial families of Madras and found out that despite there is changes in their occupation and their modernizing, but still the cultural values and customs are still passing from one generation to another generation. Though modernization has been taking place, but most of the things have been retained. So, how did they incorporate both modernization and preservation of their own traditional values and customs and traditions? And he gives numerous ethnographic details. Milton Singer's ethnographic works on Kishingari village in Uttar Pradesh highlights how the role of religion taking the concepts of great tradition and little tradition has been mutually interdependent, which has been reflected in village festivals, village deities, village gods, and village goddesses which constitutes the social structure of that village. 
and has come out that this process is though takes historical time but it is very much observable which is very much verifiable and thus these two concepts of universalization and parochialization which informs us that people are creative enough to maintain both the smaller traditions and the bigger traditions to suit to their needs and another influential thinker louis dumo which has extensively worked on the caste system in india with this famous theory saying that concept of purity and pollution operates in the whole stratification of social groups in indian civilization by giving examples of jajmani system saying that jajmani system operates on the concept of ritual pollution rather than mostly on economic aspects being understood these three concepts from pick and marry milton singer and louis dumo the whole indian civilization has been understood in terms of how people are hierarchically placed in the social positioning and how the social interactions depended upon the kind of social status people possess in a given social structure 